One time I was doing a beauty story for a top glossy magazine and uh, when the story came out it was alongside an interview with a top plastic surgeon. So they made 10 staple points of what my facial flaws were and how if they were going to fix me what the process would be. My boobs were in question and my nose was in question. So they wanted to reduce my nose and enlarge my boobs. I'm from a, a, an upbringing where Beauty wasn't necessarily prioritised, it's what you did that gave you merit. We were doing a play at school called Alice in Wonderland and I had to play the caterpillar. Talk about feeling restricted, I was literally wrapped in a quilt and had to sliver. I was incredibly shy and I suppose part of that was born out of being incredibly tall and very extreme looking and the more my body betrayed me and became this thing, this powerful thing, the, the, the tinier I felt inside, um, I almost felt apologetic about taking up so much space in the world. One day I was in a store and a woman approached me and I presumed that she thought I was stealing something from her shop, but she never took her eye off me. Next thing I know she's taken Polaroids off me. I went for a casting at Jürgen Teller's house in London. He just shot some test pictures of me and they ended up in ID. There was something almost rebellious about the statement. It was a great big grin and you just saw my train track braces and they just unapologetically screamed at you from the page. All of a sudden I understood how to become my own woman. My nose made me feel, made me appeal confident. My neck, I still think I use the most, is probably the most feminine part of me, my neck and my hands. My back became my cleavage, I knew that that was quite a sensual part of my body. I'm wearing a Dries Van Noken dress, this is one of my absolute favourites. And it sort of harks back to my dancing days, there's no form to it, I don't feel restricted in any particular way and that's why I love it. I mean, <laughs> the more it billows the better I feel. My dress today is Luxa London and um, I just love the simplicity of the shape. I'm a big fan of noir uh, and that's it really, my, my sandals are Stella McCartney. I'm actually having a bit of a brick day today. I didn't wear heels when I was a teenager. It took me a long time just to want to wear them for myself but I suppose they are the epitome of, of all things womanly. There's something quite matronly about this outfit. I almost sort of feel like Miss Jean Brodie in it. It's the least sensible piece of clothing I own. It's like Andy Pandy does it too. There's no rhyme or reason in it, but I love how playful it is. I'm wearing a kimono. I got this in Notting Hill in London. This old thing has now travelled across the world with me. I took it to India, it's been to Paris, and it's sort of lived with me everywhere I've chosen to live. I myself, for a period, found was highlighted as one of the perpetrators, a bad example, if you will, of promoting um, an unhealthy body image. Instead of being a victim, I decided to use my resources within the industry to, to make that what I felt was a valid point. I founded the sanctuary in 2007 and I suppose it felt like it was a concrete solution. They are young adults trying to make sense of the world. I think growing up in today's world is tough enough. But to have that amplified and to be on a public platform, I think aggravates and almost can intensify the issues. I mean, talk about growing pains, they're being shared with the rest of the world. Sometimes, very quietly, uh, graciously, you can maybe inspire other people to, to show them that there's a different way and many perceptions of beauty. Uh, and if you carry that with, with confidence and conviction. You may not be feeling it inside, but if you deliver that, if you display it, you look like you really mean it, then I think it allows us all, it gives us permission to be kind to ourselves or to embrace our individuality.